In this set of videos, I'm going to cover signaling pathways that affect transcription. I'm going to start off with the TGF beta pathway, which has been the star of this block. Let me just orient you to the way that I'm going to have these diagrams laid out. So I've drawn in the membrane and uh, the nucleus with uh, DNA inside of it. And the space between the membrane and the nucleus is going to be the cytoplasm. The colored labels will correspond to the shapes and what they represent on these diagrams. The TGF-beta pathway is involved in many different processes. Uh, the focus that we've put on it in this block has been on its role in vascular development, but it's also involved in many other developmental processes. And with these pathways, they start most of the time with ligand binding. So let's talk about what ligand binding does for this pathway. Now the TGF beta family ligands like to dimerize together and what they're going to do is they're going to bind to a type 2 receptor. This binding event, the type 2 receptor, brings in brings together the type 2 receptor with the type 1 receptor. So the type 2 receptor is what we called constitutively active, and it's always on. But the reason why it can't phosphorylate and, and activate the type 1 receptors is because it's just not close enough. It's not in the right orientation. So ligand binding will bring in, bring together these type 1 receptors, which I'm going to draw in yellow. That's the first step here. Now once this happens, the type 2 receptor can now activate by adding phosphate group to a process called phosphorylation to the type 1 receptor. Draw this as a dashed line from the type 2 to the type 1 adding this phosphate with its four oxygens. That's why I write it as PO4. And it does this for each type 1 receptor. After this happens, you activate the type 1 receptors. The type 1 receptors can then phosphorylate their targets which are the receptor SMADs, the R SMADs. When this event happens on the MH2 domain of the SMAD, of the R SMAD. In effect, what this does is it lets the R SMAD release from this anchor protein called SARA. So SARA stands for SMAD anchor for receptor activation. After that happens, the RSMAD can now get together with a COSMAD and enter the nucleus. RSMAD joins, COSMAD then enters nucleus. So you can think of the COSMAD in this case as the VIP pass that's going to actually allow the RSMADs to enter the nucleus. And they enter the nucleus through these structures called nuclear pore complexes. So basically pores, holes within the nuclear membrane that allow things to go in and out. And on the DNA itself are where the SMADs bind because they're transcription factors. They recognize a particular sequence and they bind to that sequence. So let's draw that in here. And the shaded in part of the SMAD is the DNA binding domain. 
And after they bind the DNA, they can regulate transcription of a particular gene. So this step here is bind DNA to regulate genes. Now there's also a non-SMAD signaling pathway, and this involves the activation of adapter proteins and kinases. These can affect the cytoskeleton, say for example by modifying actin, which can alter cell adhesion, it can change the shape of the membrane itself, it can alter how tight the cells are with one another. So in the case of a blood vessel, that would be regulating its permeability. Or it could have those activated kinases go into the nucleus and regulate other transcription factors. So that was an overview of the TGF beta signaling pathway. I hope that that helps. In the next videos, we'll take a look at some other signaling pathways that also affect transcription. Thanks for watching.